Hello, it's uh, Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing my discussions on how aerosols affect the Arctic sea ice cover, how they've affected it in the past, how they're expected to affect it in the future with the general reduction of aerosols. Um, and that, you know, helps us try to figure out the effect of the uh, coronavirus caused industrial shutdowns which have reduced aerosols significantly while the shutdowns have been in place. And can we tie that to incredibly warm Arctic temperatures? And uh, like over Siberia, for example, which are, and, and also the, the, the very, the, the sort of setting up of the Arctic for extremely rapid melt. So I talked about on the forums, the Arctic sea ice forums, how, you know, for the, uh, summer solstice on June 21st, we can expect most of the Arctic to be cloud free, you know, good chunks of it, which will set up for extremely fast melting there. Now, of course, you know, the reduction of aerosols, um, you need to talk about the different aerosols, the sulfate um, based aerosols, and also the black carbon aerosols, and they behave differently. And because the Arctic is so warm over the land, we can expect, um, you know, a rapid, uh, like a very, a very bad um, wildfire season up in the Arctic, very rapid onset of fires. And I've talked about zombie fires, which kind of smoldered in, in the permafrost, um, smoldered in the, in the peat bogs, et cetera, you know, all winter and then reignited um, when the snow left the ground. Um, of course, all of these things will create lots of black carbon, lots of other aerosols, which will that which can replace, you know, which sort of is a local, you know, Arctic far north Arctic source of of aerosols. So, you know, you know, we're going to have a, a record sea ice loss this year. I mean, that remains to be seen. You can't really predict from, you know, one for one given year because the internal variability is very high, as I pointed out you know, over a million square kilometers just for the internal variability, which is due to the chaotic nature of climate change, chaotic nature of, of what's going on in the, in the Arctic. So there's a lot of factors at play, but I'm, gonna, I'm talking about these very interesting papers um, on how aerosols affect Arctic temperatures. Oh, and uh, I forgot to point out that um, I I haven't been to chapters for months and months, and uh, I picked up this book. It's called Hacking Planet Earth, How Geoengineering Can Help Us Reimagine the Future by Thomas M. Costigan. It looks excellent, and uh, I'll be probably be, be talking about some of the things that are discussed in there um, fairly soon after I've read the book. So, so this is one of the papers, um, and it's basically you know, saying that as you decrease the aerosol loading, you get a warming, which is largest over the Arctic, and that'll reduce the um, sea ice extent. Um, and in the simulations by about a million square kilometers, which was about a, 20, a quarter of the simulated reduction in sea ice extent in the RCP 4.5 emission scenario, and 40% of the reduction in RCP 2.5. And it has a definite effect because reduction of aerosols um, increases or decreases the time to when we can expect an ice-free Arctic during the summertime. So in this emission scenario, it was a 12-year reduction. You know, again, when you talk, when you see these numbers, don't worry so much about the absolutes, but think of the, the relative change. So basically, you know, you need to, talk about sulfur dioxide emissions. So they lead to the formation of sulfate aerosols, and they peaked in the 70s and have since declined by about 15%. Okay, um, and black carbon emissions have increased throughout the 20th century. Greatest rate of, greater rate of increase between 1970 and 1990. Um, black carbon almost doubled during this time frame but there's been a bit of a decrease in the last decade. Um, this is because the, um, the aerosol emissions from North America and Europe have been reduced because of the 
uh, scrubbers on smokestacks, etc. But they're growing rapidly in in Asia. So sulfate and uh, organic carbon they scatter solar radiation and result in a net cooling of the climate system. Okay, but black carbon has the opposite effect. It absorbs it's an it absorbs the solar radiation and depending on the altitude that these black carbon particles are it causes warming it heats the atmosphere if the black carbon is is uh, close to the ground and the atmosphere close to the ground it'll heat the air because it absorbs the 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 uh, solar radiation okay so they have competing effects um, but they also have indirect effects because the aerosols act as condensation nuclei, nu, con, as cloud condensation nucleation sites, and on which cloud droplets and ice particles form. So they, you know, they lead to clouds with more but smaller water droplets, and that changes the radiative properties. It makes them much more. Uh, it's called the cloud albedo effect. The clouds become much brighter, reflect more sunlight, cause more cooling. Um, also, the clouds they don't rain out as quickly so the lifetime of the clouds is longer so they stick around longer so there's these the, these uh, indirect effects the first order indirect effect cloud albedo effect second order indirect effect cloud lifetime effect also the black carbon and dust can deposit on the ice reducing the albedo increasing the absorption and therefore increasing the the melting of the of the ice so there's all of these effects going on. The net effect is about is a is a, causes a cooling minus point zero point three five watts per square meter between 1750 and 2010. Okay, so so here's some of the some of the here this is the global SO4 burden sulfur sulfate burden. Okay, and it shows uh, how it peaked in about 19, um, 19, well, this shows 50, 1950, 60, 70, 80. So it peaked in about 1980s here, according to this data, and it's dropping, okay? And uh, if it's kept, so they looked at uh, the RCP 4.5 with the aerosols staying fixed, and the, the projections in the different climate models of how the aerosols different emission scenarios rather, representative concentration pathways from the IPCC, how the aerosols would change the, the sulfate, okay? And um, this is the black carbon, you know, peaking about 2000 and how it would change in the different emission scenarios and, and kept constant, okay? And then they looked at the effect on the Arctic. So they talked about all the different effects in the Arctic and they came up with uh, they, they discovered that about 60 percent of the warming induced by increasing greenhouse gases over the 20th century has been offset by the combined response to other anthropogenic forcing agents which are dominated by aerosols so aerosols have the the presence of aerosols being you know from being produced from Europe and North America specifically, um, you know, caused a, uh, cause, you know, kept the sea ice around longer. As the aerosols are cleaned up, the Arctic is warmer and warmer, and the sea ice is lost more quickly. Okay, um, but there's also more and more aerosols being produced um, in, in, the develop in, in Asia, in China, and... Uh, so they've tried to simulate all of that, basically. And so here's uh, some of the results. This is the ensemble mean Arctic sea ice extent, historically, black line. And, it's, and basically, you know, the, these are the different scenarios here. Okay, and uh, they took out the, uh, you know, they, they, they looked at the greenhouse gas only effect if the aerosols didn't change. And the net result is that the, the aerosols, as the aerosols are reduced, then the Arctic uh, is warmed more, okay? So the aerosols have a huge effect. Um, and uh, 
So here's some, some of the results here, the sea ice extent response to aerosol changes. Okay, and this is the extent in millions of square kilometers. And basically they showed all of the different RCP models, roughly you get about a million square kilometer um, drop, okay, due to the um, aerosol changes. Okay, so as the aerosols are reduced, you get about a million square kilometer drop in these models. So this means that the reduction of the aerosols from the industrial shutdown due to the coronavirus has had a definite effect on extra warming in the Arctic and uh, more rapid sea ice loss. Okay, that's what the gist of the paper is. And this shows you these, uh, the sea, Arctic sea ice extent in September. Um, and, you know, with the different RCP models, you know, this is RCP 4.5, but keeping aerosols the same. And this shows, the arrow shows you when you get dropped below, uh, you know, 1 million square kilometers. So the Arctic becomes ice free. And the RCP 4.5 with a reduction of aerosols shows you, you know, you, that you lose sea ice 12 years earlier. This is the 8.5 scenario here, 2.6 scenario. So you can see where you can expect the complete loss of sea ice extent uh, in these different scenarios you can compare the effect of the aerosols by looking at the RCP 4.5 and 4.5 with fixed aerosols. Okay, so this is where the, what they got the, so they found a significant difference between the onset of Arctic ice-free summers in each scenario. Um, and they found that the aerosols had a, had a, had a very, very large effect. Um, Okay, so I'd highly recommend that you have a look at this paper. It changed the date uh, which the Arctic Ocean became ice-free during summertime in, this, in the uh, modeling uh, by, by 12 years. And again, look at the difference. You know, don't worry so much about the absolutes because these dates seem very, very late, as I've discussed in previous videos. Okay, so again, there's competing effects, different effects between whether it's sulfate declining or black carbon declining, and also where they're declining. Because, you know, if they're declining in North America and Europe, they're, uh, you know, closer up to the Arctic. If, it's, if or they're declining in areas, you know, in China, for example, they're further from the Arctic. So that's the one paper. And this paper, I'm not going to talk about in great detail, but it also talks about the role of the aerosols in Arctic sea ice variations. Uh, similar things, I mean, it shows how the aerosols are changing. This is sulfur dioxide. So this is uh, the North American numbers. They peaked in 1970, dropped. Europe peaked and dropped. East Asia growing, South Asia growing, and putting those into the model. Um, they looked at the effect on ice, and uh, without going into all the details, this is the sort of model. So dropping in North America and Europe, this is aerosol optical depth, growing in India, growing in South Asia. Okay, so using that, they looked at the effects on temperature and radiative forcing in the Arctic, and they found similar results to the previous uh, paper. So there's lots of details, there's lots of information here. Um, they looked at the September sea ice change um, between, you know, uh, the effects of the percentage of change in September due to aerosols uh, globally changing between 1970 and 2010, um, and uh, the effect of greenhouse gases, and they got the percentage due to aerosols and again, they found similar results to um, to the previous uh, paper. So there's lots of lots of more details in here, which I'm not going to get into discussing in this video. And uh, but basically, you know, we know that um, when aerosols are reduced, you know, the temperature increases because you reduce global dimming, um, and the effect in the Arctic is magnified. Okay, so thank you for listening uh, once again. Um, bye for now.